In the past two months, we probably had one of the most interesting AI hardware developments in recent time. Not only we got new GPU designs, but also some companies that are looking to reinvent the basis of computing. This rapid development might be linked to how rapid AI is being democratized, where everyone, that includes you and me, or even small startups, can now run high quality AI models themselves thanks to how fast open source are catching up to Megacorp's commercial models. So for today, let's have a quick glimpse into what the future holds for AI computations as NVIDIA might just not be the sole winner from this AI hardware arms race. Starting off with bigger the better, the current world's fastest GPU chip, and nope, it's not from NVIDIA. Cerebras, a Toronto-based AI training company, announced Cerebras CS3, which is a training chip that contains a whooping 4 trillion transistors that is 20 times more than the NVIDIA Blackwell that was announced during GTC a few weeks back. While transistor count may not be everything about compute, as the its price, its transistor density, the thing looks huge by the way compared to the Blackwell, and its communication bottleneck might still hold itself back, it still can get up to 256 exaflops of computations via 248 nodes or with 125 petaflops of AI performance individually. Whereas the biggest singular GPU unit that Nvidia currently has, the GB200 NVL72, only has 1.4 exaflops with its singular Blackwell chip having up to 10 petaflops. This CS3 bad boy has 44 GB on-chip SRAM that can train AI models up to 4 trillion parameters in a single logical memory space without partitioning or refactoring. Definitely pretty cool for big companies that want to keep scaling, but for us individuals, it's like, why should we care? So let's move on to the consumer side. Here's a company that you might be familiar with called Grok. Not the Grok LM model by XAI, but Grok with a Q. Their main focus is to develop inference chips that makes LM token generation faster than any platforms or hardwares. The Grok LPU, which stands for language processing unit is a novel inference engine which at the time of announcement can generate up to 300 tokens per second. Just look at the generation speed for yourself. It's literally lightning fast and to be honest, I have never seen LM generating this fast. For Mixroll AX7B, it can do nearly 500 tokens per second at the speed that your eyes can even keep up. I think right now Grok is probably the current fastest API provider where the recent Gemma 7B is up 15 times speed compared to the other API providers, and they got one of the best API price against its throughput too, which is pretty crazy. But if APIs do not interest you, on the consumer hardware side, things are getting interesting for the Mac users. While Apple Silicon is known for its unified memory where you can run AI models that even consumer NVIDIA GPU can even run, it is also known to have the least ecosystem and its slow speed at AI inferencing, aka if you can run it, doesn't mean it'll be usable. A new company called Truffle released Truffle 1, which is a dedicated AI inference unit for Mac, and it has a really interesting design for its outer look. This cortex-looking AI accelerating hardware can perform 20 tokens per second, which is 2.5 times faster than your standard M1 Mac, and it also slightly outperforms RTX 3090. With its energy cost halved compared to M1 chips, it can run models up to 100 billion parameters with its dedicated 60 GB RAM. Under the hood, they use the NVIDIA Orin iGP which is the type of hardware that shares system memory with the CPU without actually having a GPU. It basically is an NVIDIA module attached to a custom carried board. Its starting price is sitting at $1,300 US dollars. And just letting you guys know, I'm not sponsored by any of these hardware brands today. For the non-Mac people, unfortunately, NVIDIA didn't announce any consumer hardware this year, so we might have to wait another year for the 50 series. But feel free to check out my GTC video for more detailed insights on the hardware NVIDIA announced this year. And if you are a competition believer, Intel silently wrote out a research paper on their data center GPUs called Intel Max 1550 that was announced last year, where they made some crazy optimizations that outperforms H100 GPUs by 2.84 times in inference and 1.75 times in training. But the catch is, only if they indirectly cap the H100 where you can only achieve 10 to 20% HFU, then they can beat it. Alright, time for a quick explanation on HFU. Hardware flops utilization, aka HFU. HFU is a metric that shows the practical and the theoretical difference in maximum flops a computer system has. Since when using a system
them practically. The performance of the hardware is also dependent on how well the codes in the implementations are written, which usually determine how big of a slowdown the performance has when compared to its theoretical flops performance. It is calculated by dividing the actual flops achieved by the system with its theoretical maximum flops. This then tells us how much of the theoretical computational power is being effectively utilized. So if it's actually capping it to 10 to 20% on their H100s, that is definitely a bit too crazy to use as a comparison. But at this point, everyone just flops this transistor that. Maybe the Moore's Law is fake, and the end game for AI hardware is not with transistors, but most likely something else. Well, that might be exactly what the people at Extropic AI thinks, as they are designing a revolutionary hardware that completely removes transistors and reinvent computing specifically for AI. If they succeed, we would have chips that would use trillions of times less energy and run million times faster than the junctions we use in transistors. How is that possible? Not much details have been shared, and there's a lot of skepticism around this. Just look at how bad their documentary got ratioed on Twitter, but I'll try my best to explain the details they have provided so far. So it all has to do with the essence of AI, which is modeling a statistical distribution. While computers are designed to perform deterministic operations like choosing zeros and ones, machine learning is more on the probabilistic side of things where everything is between zeros and ones. So it is to an extent counterintuitive to use a deterministic machine to perform non-deterministic operations. In hindsight, the level of inefficiency is out of scale. But of course, we didn't really have a choice to begin with. So Extropic has proposed a method called thermodynamic computing which can harvest the nature of physics and uses it to perform probabilistic operations at an electron level where an electron is basically your random number generator. While your standard everyday computer is using pseudo-random to approximate the sequences of random numbers, this physics harvesting hardware would contain true randomness and can be tuned into complex probabilistic shapes using just heat and a few parameters that would tinker with the electrons. Each thermodynamic neuron then learns a complex probability distribution and stores the energy potential, which allows the incredible increase in million times of performance for learning probabilistic distributions. So when you need to generate a new sample, you just pretty much measure the behaviors of the system. Quoting Andrew, who wrote a really good explainer on this technology by the way, in a transistor, the maximum speed of operation is limited by the time it takes enough charge carriers to start moving to reach greater than unity gain. For a thermal chip, the speed is only limited by the time it takes ambient heat to enter the system and re-randomize its state. This thermal chip is an energy-based method that isn't like the deterministic operations simulating randomness. It is utilizing an inherent feature that nature has, and we would just be harvesting it for free. Anyways, what Extropic is doing definitely sounds extremely ambitious, but if this chip actually becomes real, it'll turn the entire AI chip industry upside down. I just want to say I am not an expert on chips and definitely not an expert on pioneering thermal chips. A lot of people have also been criticizing how they are overestimating their impact with this random number generator hardware they have, so definitely choose your own level of copium at your own risk. But what I do know that is definitely not a cope is today's sponsor Gamma.app, which had my jaws on the floor with how easy they made creating presentations. Let me just show you. I literally just pasted my entire video scripts in and boom, it just generates a pretty banger presentation that is really stylistic with layouts that is perfect for what I am talking about and relevant icons plus AI generated images to complement what I'm trying to explain. This feels like the future of presentations. You barely need any manual inputs and it will curate the best layouts for you. It's just that easy. I am just overall really impressed at this point because I have not seen a service that has integrated so well with AI. This is perfect for non-designers like me as you now have an AI perfecting the layouts for you when it is relevant to your presentation content. I didn't really know what to expect when I decided to work with Gamma, but they definitely blown my expectations and other than making presentations, it can also generate a landing page for you. And what's really neat about it is that you can choose to use real or AI generated images for the graphics and you can even prompt a general style for them if you want. With Gamma.app's latest AI technology, it is going to change our way of making presentations. So go check it out now using the link down in the description and thank you Gamma.app for sponsoring this video. A big shout out to Andrew Lascellias, Chris Ledoux, Alex J, Deegan, Alex Maurice, Migulim, Fafau, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.